car crashes, defective products, dangerous drugs, injuries, and abuse. Across the state of Alabama, the attorneys, proudly sponsored by the law firm of Hollis Wright, are here to serve you. Your tough legal questions answered by our experts with host David Lamb and the attorneys of Hollis Wright. Good evening and welcome in to the attorneys. We appreciate you being with us tonight. An interesting show on tap. Going to be explaining a lot of the legal terms and legal jargon that you hear and making sense of it. Uh, so we're going to answer some questions that I know I've asked and hopefully you have asked before in the past. Uh, before we get to that, a couple of reminders about our show and kind of what makes it unique. All throughout the program tonight, there are ways you can uh, get in touch with us. We love for that to happen. So if a question pops into your mind and you'd love to get it to us, you can pass that along. Ways at the bottom of your screen for you to do so. Also, Hollis Wright makes available attorneys each each and every Sunday night during tonight's show, uh, attorneys from Hollis Wright are going to be standing by live. That's a free off air and confidential conversation. It's an opportunity for you to take advantage of. You can do that all throughout the program tonight. So just keep that in mind. Leading our conversation uh, from Hollis Wright, Alwyn Horn. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, David. Good glad to, see to be you. here. Good to I'm see glad you. you're here as well. So, so tell us, what are we talking about tonight? Well, tonight we have um, Mr. Todd Wheels here, who I've been fortunate enough to know for almost 20 years now. Todd has worked um, consistently with the firm of Morris Haynes that has an exceptional reputation and has for decades across the state of Alabama and across the nation. So, Todd, um, we're going to talk about all types of different cases and specialties that your firm engages in. But first, tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your background. Well, I'm from here uh, in East Central Alabama, originally uh, from Clay County. Uh, wound up at Auburn, uh, graduated there, went to you know, continue my education. Uh, while I was working, I wound up working as an Alabama State Trooper and then ABI agent. Uh, and, and, and I think that brings a, a lot to your ability to investigate and evaluate cases. So expand upon that a little bit and how that helped you. Sure, I think it really helped, especially when it comes to uh, you know, crashes. Um, you know, we, as, as a trooper, you know, I got a lot of training in, in evaluating traffic crashes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're talking about everything from bicycles to the biggest 18-wheeler you can imagine. So uh, that really helped a lot. And in my experience uh, as, an, as an agent with the Major Crime Service of ABI, uh, I think really helped me as a litigator uh, when it comes to, you know, inve in investigating um, Causes sure. of, 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 you know. And, and we're talking about here, you, you spoke of just trucks accidents, but your firm handles a myriad of different types of claim and some specialties and some topics we're going to talk about tonight, but y'all been responsible for some very large results, settlements and verdicts. And, um, but let, let's just jump right into it. I mean, y'all specialize in personal injury claims. We do. We, that, historically, that's been the backbone of our practice, you know, personal injury and wrongful death work. Uh, in and around Alabama and the surrounding states. Uh, we've expanded in, in certain areas of, of practice nationwide. Well, let's keep it simple for now. Kind of tell us, you know, or what you think the audience who's listening to us tonight, what should someone do if they think they need a lawyer, if they've been injured somehow? What, do you, what are some of the suggestions they do just to, to get the ball rolling? Well, I, you know, we get that question as lawyers all the time. You know, what should I do if I've been hurt? whether it's in a car wreck or some other way. If you think you need a lawyer, you probably need a lawyer. You know, if you think you need to talk to a lawyer, you need to talk to a lawyer. Uh, reach out to, I would recommend, someone you know. Mm -hmm. Most people in Alabama is going to have a family friend they went to high school with, they went to college with, they played football with, or was on a cheerleading squad. They're going to know somebody that was a lawyer. Reach out to that person that you know. Ask them about it. And if they don't specialize, you know, let's say you were hit by an 18-wheeler, they may not do that kind of work. They may be a lawyer who does divorces or child custody, but they'll know somebody who specializes in that kind of work, and they can refer you to somebody and, and, who does that. And, you know, one of the, I guess, the, the points you're making is because let's just take on, for example, 18-wheeler accidents that your firm and you have a lot of experience in, is that the individual who doesn't have representation is a lot of times going against a, a trucking company or an insurance company that has already has lawyers on their team and on their side. Is that right? Well, absolutely. Um, and it's, it's mostly insurance companies. And, you know, I, I say this all the time and I joke, but you're, you're not in good hands. You know, they're not a good neighbor. <laughs> they're actually out there trying to 
protect their investors. And they're trying to spend the least amount of money possible. So if you're hit by an 18-wheeler, whoever the insurance company is for that 18-wheeler is going to have a group of professionals out there reconstructing that crash, taking pictures, making measurements, investigating that crash the day that it happened. And tell us, you know, if, if I was unfortunately one of these individuals that, that sustained, you know, significant injuries or injuries at all as a result of being hit by an 18-wheeler, and I was to reach out to you, what are some of the things you would do to help me to make sure we are combating against the insurance company, you know, getting there first or preserving the evidence and things of that nature? Well, one of the first things we would do is send out um, crash traffic accident investigators. You know, we're, there are private guys, retired police officers or engineers who go out and do uh, investigations and reconstruct crashes. You know, the one thing people don't think about, you see less and less skid marks on the road today. And people, you know, if, you, if you don't think about it, you don't go, well, why is that? Well, because there are anti-lock brakes. Even on commercial vehicles now, you have anti-lock brakes. Well, anti-lock brakes, if, let's say, an 18-wheeler slams on the brake and slides into someone, you may not have 100 feet of skid marks like you had 20 years ago, but there is a shadow on the roadway that you can see for a short period of time. Well, if you don't get someone out there to photograph that shadow, it's gone. If it rains two days later, three days later, that evidence is gone forever. So it's very important to, because the trucking company is going to do it, they're going to get out there and you can't rely on them to document the evidence. And real quick, just because a lot of times when an 18-wheeler is involved, you're dealing with such more significant injuries, there's damages, it could be life-changing. Uh, what are some other things that, that the individual needs to know that make these, that these types of cases more complex where they will benefit from retaining you? Well, you know, the trucking industry is highly regulated. You know, there's a lot of rules and regulations that are uh, adopted or promulgated by the states that apply to drivers, they apply to the vehicles. So you, you need to make sure that all the information surrounding the crash is documented. Uh, make sure witnesses don't disappear on you. And that's the thing, I guess the more time somebody waits, is it is it accurate to say, hey, evidence and people disappear, their addresses change, things of that nature? That's absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. And you've been doing this for and had some really good results in the last two years. We have over the, over, over the years, we've had some. And, and do y'all work pr pretty much every county in the state? We do. Okay. And the surrounding states as well. Okay. Okay. Let's take a break. Let's step aside right now. Our first break of the evening. We'll pick up right here um, whenever we get back as we head to break. I want to remind you, uh, just in case you're not following Hollis Wright on social media, if you uh, love Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, anywhere, wherever you are, they are. And it's a, a really helpful um, social media kind of educational informational opportunity and a lot of what you see on the show tonight you will also see uh, on Facebook so it's kind of easy easier for you to share it uh, especially if it's pertinent and you think something that maybe a friend or family member needs to hear social media a great way to do that all right we're stepping aside we're coming right back more of the attorneys after this short break stay with us I'm Josh Wright with the law firm of Hollis Wright, a personal injury law firm, and thank you for watching The Attorneys. We hope you, a friend, or a loved one never needs legal counsel for a case. But if you do, the goal of the show is simple, to provide answers and legal counsel when you need it the most. Your call to the show is free and off air. So if you have questions specific to the show or related to other accident or injury topics, call, email, or text us. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, or go to hollis-right.com and click on the Contact Us button. We know your time is valuable, so thank you for spending it with us and watching The Attorneys. The Attorneys, proudly sponsored by the law firm of Hollis Wright, are here to serve you. When we started the show eight years ago, my hope was we would be able to do what we do best, which is to 
help people answer real world legal related issues they have in their life. People oftentimes are confronting various legal issues and problems in their lives that range across the gamut of legal practice areas, bankruptcy, criminal law, family law, just to name a few. And to be able to have a 30 minute platform or format to where we can just cover various legal topics once a week uh, that's obviously the primary focus of the show. That we would be able to use the resources of the many lawyers we have at this law firm to create a plan that had a lasting impact that also gave back to the community at the same time. And I think we've done just that with the attorneys. Welcome back into the attorneys. Before we get back to our conversation, a reminder that attorneys from Hollis Wright are standing by live all throughout the program, but you've got to get in touch with them. That free, off air, and confidential conversation, just pick up the phone, give them a call, text, whatever is best for you, and get in touch with those attorneys who are standing by live right now. Alvin? David, thank you. Todd, we're here again. And, uh, you know, you did a great job explaining to people the significance and importance of getting an attorney really in a lot of situations, but especially the 18 wheeler accidents. But I know that your firm over the years, and especially recently, I think y'all are once the first firm in the nation to really go after this type of cause of action, and it deals with infectious diseases. Tell us some of the situations, particularly the one I'm referring to that, that you guys specialize in. Well, we, we got involved in Legionnaire's disease litigation uh, really about 10 years ago uh, here, in, here in central Alabama. We uh, represented, were fortunate enough to represent two guys uh, who unfortunately were made sick when they were exposed to dirty water. And, and yeah, keep going. Explain that. Yeah, Explain that as how people contract Legionnaires and exactly what it is. You wonder why it's important to put chlorine in a swimming pool or to put chlorine in a hot tub. Well, the reason you do that is to kill certain bacteria that can live in water. Uh, one of those bacteria is Legionella, Legionella bacteria. Legionella is, I learned this term, they didn't teach me this at, at Clay County High School, it's ubiquitous, <laughs> meaning it's everywhere. it's everywhere. Okay, it's in streaks and creams mm -hmm. and rivers and lakes. I mean, every lake within 100 miles of here, there's Legionella bacteria in it. But that Legionella bacteria exists in such a low concentration where it really is not that big a, uh, a threat to someone. Now, if you, if that Legionella is introduced to a small body of water, like a hot tub, like a swimming pool, like a water system in an industrial building, and there are not proper um, disinfectant techniques taken that, that are present by the owner of the building, if you wash your face, if you brush your teeth over a sink that's running, if you're in a hot tub and the, the mist is coming off the hot tub, when you breathe that mist in that contains that bacteria, you can get terribly, terribly sick. And, and tell us, what, what do you mean by terribly sick? What are the symptoms? Because, you know, this is, is not real common, I would think, in everyday normal life. How do people, how would they know that they may be developing Well, this? we just lived through this past 12, 14 months through the COVID crisis. Legionnaires and the, the pneumonia, which is called Legionnaires disease, that develops when you're infected by the Legionella bacteria is very similar to a COVID infection. You show up with a fever, you have GI issues, you have an undiagnosed pneumonia. People, uh, they get a fever, they get, they get the feeling just really terrible. They show up at the doctor's office and they shoot an x-ray and they've got pneumonia in their chest and it's called community acquired pneumonia. You know, nobody knows at that point where it came from. And the problem with uh, Legionella bacteria is it doesn't respond to most broad spectrum antibiotics. There are antibiotics out there that will treat it, but it takes really hard work by the doctors to, to diagnose it. And well, that, that was a question. If you have pneumonia, I mean, is there a classification, I mean, of Legionnaire pneumonia, at what point would a doctor pick up on this or, or even the patient? Well, it, the, it, you know, and every time we get a Legionnaire's case, a Legionella case, I can almost tell you how the hospitalization progressed. Because the person shows up, they've got a low oxygen saturation, they've got, they feel horrible, they're put in ICU. So the doctors, infectious disease people, put them on broad spectrum antibiotics, which is the standard of care, mm -hmm. which is what the doctors should do in a, an unknown origin pneumonia. Well the Legionella bacteria does not respond to broad spectrum 
antibiotics, the ones that are normally is, prescribed. Is that part of a process of elimination, that so to speak? Absolutely part of a process of elimination. So the doctors, two or three days in, realize, oh no, these antibiotics aren't working. What else could be causing this pneumonia? That's when they really, in those 48, 72 hours, start testing for other things. And hopefully, the, the, the person that's been made sick will test positive for a Legionella antigen or something that'll, te that'll, that'll you know, then instruct the doctors on what kind of medicine to prescribe. And I assume once, you know, a, a patient or a patient's relatives or loved ones at the hospital are advised what's going on, they try to do, they, they think back, where have I been, where I could have contracted this, because this is a question I have. Assume it came from a hot tub when they're out of town in a different state at a hotel or in a pool somewhere else. What do you do to preserve that evidence of the bacteria that's in the water? Well, that's a very difficult thing to do okay. uh, because um, the CDC, if, if, there is an, if there's a Legionella infection at UAB here in Birmingham, UAB has to contact the CDC and say, hey, this is a reportable illness. We've got a Legionella. Uh, infection. If there are two or more people that have been made sick, it's an outbreak. So then the CDC, by and through the local health department, would conduct an investigation. And this would be notifying the entity or facility where it con was contracted by chance. But that takes weeks okay. sometimes. So if, if someone winds up diagnosed with Legionella, with, with Legionnaire's disease, just like a trucking case, it's really important to talk to a lawyer because Legionnaire's Legionella infection is preventable. Well, that's exactly where I'm going. So if, if people can connect the dots, so to speak, as, as this history passes, as you've explained, the chronology, and they contacted you or your firm, what are the steps you'd take to preserve this evidence and, and pursue this claim? Well, first, you know, we would try to nail down and hammer down any possible sources of exposure. And then our firm would send out letters of protection to those, let's say it was a hotel and they were in a hot tub in Slidell, Louisiana, you know, or wherever. Mm -hmm. uh, we have those all the time. We see cases where people are traveling and they're in a hot tub or a pool and they get sick and we wind up having to work with the local health department uh, in an attempt to, to do the investigation. But the, the, the proof in the, is in the pudding there. They, uh, these entities that should do maintenance on these bodies of water. Mm -hmm. When I say bodies of water, I'm talking about a, a hot tub. Right. A hot tub, if you're at a hotel, yeah, I tell my family, do not get in a hot tub at a hotel. That water should be changed twice a day. Well, the, the, It should be drained and disinfected twice a day, in my opinion. Well, very, but, very, very specialized and very interesting. Uh, you're one of the few we know to handle that. Yeah. And I would just bet it's not drained once or twice a day. <laughs> we haven't found one that was drained. Yeah. Yeah. That mm. way. No, sir. That's, that's scary to think about. All right, we got to step aside our uh, second and final break of the evening. We're going to pick up uh, right here whenever we get back. Um, so uh, stick around. Stay tuned. More of the attorneys coming right up. I'm Josh Wright with the law firm Apollos Wright. As with any industry, it's important in the legal world to hire an attorney that is knowledgeable and has a track record of success. But with so many attorneys out there and so many different types of cases, how does someone decide the right lawyer to hire? In this week's Legal 4 and 1, we're answering the question, what should I consider in hiring an attorney? In-state versus out-of-state, big firm or little firm, recommendations from friends or family, the internet, the phone book, or TV with so many choices and so much information, it can be an overwhelming task trying to make the right decision. To complicate things, choosing a lawyer is an important and sometimes life-affecting decision and should not be taken lightly. So how do you select an attorney? First, do your research. Look the firm up on the internet. Learn about the cases they handle and the results they get. Second. Find out what clients are saying about the firm. Many websites provide client testimonials or have a star ranking system. Use those to your advantage. And finally, talk with a lawyer from their office and ask them questions. Questions about the volume of cases they handle. Do they return phone calls? Are you just a number or a client that gets the attention 
you deserve. Please remember, your call, email, or text to the attorneys is free. All of us at Hollis Wright want to help answer your questions on real issues you face. Remember, a competent lawyer will respond to every question you send in. That's our pledge and promise to you. Thanks for watching The Attorneys right here on WBTM 13. Welcome back in to the attorneys. About seven and a half minutes remaining in the show, so the clock is ticking. If you've waited to ask a question, you got just a few minutes to do so, especially if you want to speak with those attorneys from Hollis Wright who are standing by live just to speak with you. So uh, take advantage of that opportunity. Alwyn? Thank you, David. Back here with Todd. Todd, you've done a great job of explaining these special areas of practice that your firm engages in. And one of the other large areas y'all do, which of course would include all types of consumer products, but are of course called products liability claims or product defect cases. Explain to our audience what, what's meant by a products liability claim or a products defect case. Well, in gen generally, a product liability claim would be brought when some kind of consumer product uh, malfunctioned and as a direct result of that malfunction, someone was injured or killed. Uh, you think about, you know, you always heard about the Ford Pinto mm -hmm. uh, from the 70s, you know, and Ford made a decision to put the gas tank behind the axle and people got killed as a result of that. That was a defect in the design of that car. And, and speaking of that, aren't there a couple of different types of product liability claims where it may be defect or manufacturing or assembly or things of that nature? Absolutely. It could be a design case where the, the, the design of the product uh, was just wrong. Uh, it was designed improperly and it was inherently dangerous. Or that could be a manufacturing defect where uh, something happened that day and the thing just wouldn't put together right and as a result of the manufacturing defect someone gets hurt or killed. And, and speaking of that, when you talk about how things are designed or built, you're dealing with a, a lot of engineers and a lot of people that have been a lot of schooling that are a lot smarter than I may be. Uh, a lot, sma so, lot so smarter than me So what too. makes the product liability case, why is it that much more important to get a lawyer that's familiar with doing that, even as composed to just a straight up automobile accident claim? Well, we, we deal uh, with some pretty specific claims um, uh, over the years and you have to know the language. You have to be able to speak the language that these lawyers and these engineers are, 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 are using. And are experts required a lot of times? Absolutely. Experts are required. You have to have design engineers, manufacturing engineers. Um, you know, they're all kind of experts that you wind up having to, to, to hire to prove the case, to prove that A, it was designed or manufactured improperly, and B, that as a direct result of that design or manufacturing defect, the harm was caused. And when you're referring to hiring, of course, the let's just use, for example, the automotive industry, they have their experts on payroll because they are their employees. But you and your firm, when you see a case that's valid or worth pursuing, y'all actually incur those costs and expenses of retaining experts. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. That's correct. In the prosecution of the case, we look at, at the, we're the prosecutors on the civil side. You know, when someone's arrested for a crime, the DA comes in and prosecutes that case. Well, we represent people that haven't been hurt in a criminal context. They've been hurt civilly. So we step in as the civil prosecutor, and we prosecute that case on behalf of the injured party. And that's how I like to explain it to people. And, you know, something I thought was interesting in some of your topics you, you brought here with us tonight to discuss is has to do with the defective guns and the lack of regulations in, in, in the state and, and in a national level as well. And, you know, given your your background in law enforcement, discuss with us maybe some of the cases you've had or what you look for when, when you have a, a products liability case involving a firearm. Well, I, I didn't start out to get into firearm defect litigation. It just kind of fell into my lap, no pun intended. We had a guy in Gadsden uh, who had an unintended drop of a handgun. He dropped it and when it hit the floor it went off and shot him. Uh, and, a, and a lawyer in Etowah County referred the case to my law partner and he didn't know which end of the gun the bullet came out of. Mm -hmm. So the case wound up on my desk. And my thought, this was 12 years ago, was, you know, modern firearms shouldn't fire when they're not supposed to fire. That's kind of the premise I was operating from. And that just wasn't the case. 
uh, this gun did not would if you if it was dropped, even with the safety on, it would fire. So we litigated that case, and it it has evolved into a very what I like to think pretty robust firearms defect litigation practice, where we litigate all over the United States. Uh, we've prosecuted dozens of individual cases where people where safety devices on firearms have failed. Now, I'll get around to answering your question. Firearms are one of the only products in America that aren't tested by the, any arm of the U.S. government, okay? Nobody tests the safeties, nobody from the U.S. government, from the ATF, from the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Firearms were specifically exempted from any oversight by the U.S. government. So if you buy a firearm in America, you're having to trust that the manufacturer is making it a safe firearm. And assuming, like in this, this case, it wasn't safe because it would fire when it wasn't intended to be firing, what, who, what do y'all use? How do you prove, since there's no standard, so to speak, that, that, that the um, firearm was defective? Well, again, I start with the basic premise. I'm a pretty simple guy. Gun shouldn't go bang unless you pull the trigger. I think everybody can agree Makes that sense. it shouldn't go bang unless you pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. So we do testing. We go out and buy exemplar firearms, meaning you know, we don't test the actual gun itself. We go out and buy a bunch of them that are just like the one that, that we say uh, failed. We test those. We have an engineer look at them. We test them. And if, if, if they'll fail, then we think So we again, possibly. something you absorb as part of your evaluation and pursuit of the case is y'all are going to front this money and see what you can do with it. Yes, sir. Right. Um, this is one of those shows where we need more time, but we're out of time. So we ain't got it tonight. Uh, but just want to give you guys a final thought. And Todd, if you would, you go first. About 30 seconds uh, for our viewers, please, sir. Well, I want to thank y'all. Thank Josh. Thank, thank the Hollis Wright firm for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, would love to. Uh, talk some more about all these issues as you as, as a lawyer I can talk all day but if you if you think you need a lawyer talk to a lawyer if you've been injured by a, a product if you've been injured by a third party and it wasn't your fault reach out to somebody you know and and talk to them and, 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 and find out what the best course of action would be I would just say this Todd's a very upstanding individual the fact that he's been with the same firm for 20 years and engaged in these types of cases involving catastrophic injuries devastating injury life-changing injuries just shows the caliber of himself and his firm so he's somebody you want to look up that sounds good Todd uh, appreciate the time. Thank you, sir. Uh, Alwyn, always good to see you. Thank always you, enjoy being here. Thank you. Um, as we uh, wrap up here, want to say to you, um, we appreciate you joining us each and every week as well. We are here for you, and hopefully you found tonight's show informative uh, and educational. That is our plan, and that is our goal. Um, again, don't forget to check out Hollis Wright on social media. Great updates uh, several times a day and things that we believe might be helpful and useful to you. Thanks so much for the time. We'll look for you next time right here on The Attorneys. Have a great week, everybody everybody. Thanks for watching The Attorneys, sponsored by Hollis Wright.